Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are headed back underwater. We've got some awesome underwater footage for you guys of bass eating bluegill swim baits. We all know that bass are very predatory against bluegill. They love to eat them, especially in and around the spawn. Springtime is prime time for those bluegill imitators, and today we're gonna take an in-depth look at it. Over the last couple of weeks, we've done a handful of very in-depth bed fishing videos for you. I did an all-encompassing video for you. Tim did a fantastic finesse approach to sight fishing. Today, we're gonna focus back in specifically on those bluegill imitators. Now, today we're talking sight fishing and we're talking bed fish. So the footage you're watching, these are bed fish defending their nests. That said, this applies year round, but especially all through the spring months in much of the country. A lot of fisheries, the bass's prime forage is bluegill. So whether these were bed fish or not, this information and watching how these bass interact with these baits will apply on and off the bed. You can use these baits to catch giant fish. So we're gonna run through a handful of options here. Look at size, color, that sort of thing so you understand the applications for the baits. Coming out the gate, bluegill as a species are an inherently difficult shape for a bass to eat. In fact, this Huddleston is a prime example. See these spikes up on top? That is truly what a bluegill looks like when it gets upset and flares up. All those spikes come up and they can get stuck in a bass's mouth. We've all seen those photos of bass floating on the surface alive with a big bluegill stuck in their mouth. Because of that, it is also difficult for a bass to eat an imitation in the same shape. It's just a difficult shape. If you have just a slender little bait, it's much easier for a bass to get its mouth around it than a big swim bait. So, bluegill swim baits have an inherently low hookup ratio, meaning you can get a lot of bites and not hook the fish, which can be incredibly frustrating. That is why I picked this handful of very specific baits to walk you guys through. These are baits that are smaller, they're more compact, and they're easier for the fish to eat. That is the key because there are all kinds of bluegill baits on the market, soft baits and hard baits but they don't all have great hookup ratios. So we're gonna talk specifically about spawning bass and I'll walk you through these baits, but understand that the vast majority of these can just be used to catch fish too. Just going down the bank, fishing around weed beds, fishing around bluegill beds while the bluegill are spawning, the bass are in there eating them big time. Uh, so all of these baits have two applications. Let's start out with the mat lures. I think that's the place we want to start. Now, mat lures come with three different kinds of tails. Uh, they come with a just a regular paddle or boot tail. They come with a true flat tail. And then they come with this big bulbous tail as well. If I were only going to pick one, it would just be the regular boot paddle tail. And the reason for that is the flat tails are awesome for bed fishing because it's a true natural appearance, right? There's no boot at all, it's just flat. But you have absolutely no swim, no movement. So all you can do is just bounce that thing in the bed. Whereas these boot tails, you can do all the above. You can work these slow and bounce them along the bottom. And those fish just come up and wolf them, just eat them, they hit them so hard. But you can also, go down the bank and fish these baits. It's a true swim bait. It's not just a bed fishing application. You can just fish them. And because they've got that big exposed jig hook, you're gonna have a great hookup ratio. Now I really wanna focus in on this one. This is the standard size mat lures. This is what they call a U2. That little U2 is just a smaller shape. It's easier for the fish to eat excellent color schemes. It's got a great little tail kick. You can just creep it slow on bottom. You can also bounce it. And then it does have a belly hanger as well if you wanted to put a stinger hook down here. Typically, I don't run the stinger hook. Typically, you're gonna be good with just the jig hook. But that little U2 
is a winner. Now, of course, all these bluegill baits can be really difficult to get in the spring. Most of these come from small manufacturers and they sell out. Uh, but we're gonna link you all the baits down in the video description because you can still get a bunch of them right now. So that little mat lures you two are the regular size mat lures. Given a choice, I'd go with either the paddle tail or that bigger bulbous tail over a flat tail because you have more applications, but they all work. And then as far as color goes, you know the male bluegills, female bluegills, those bold colors are really nice, but I really don't hang up that much on color. I mean, you see both of these, these are crappie colors. I wouldn't even hesitate to throw these because it's more of a profile thing. I don't care too much about the specific color. This is a little Huddleston, little Huddleston crappie, but again, great bed fishing application. It's got a smaller version of that Huddleston tail we're all familiar with, so really slow, natural kick. You can creep it, you can go fast with it, you can bounce it, uh, but that is a great bait. Now, it is a weedless bait, so you, inherently you will have a worse hookup ratio with a true weedless bait like this than you would with a big exposed jig hook. But you can always modify this. You can add a second hook to get that hookup ratio if you're having a problem. But this is a great profile to get those fish to react. Next one, this is a Rego. Now the Rego is a line through, so you're only running a belly treble on this bait. But because it's line through, when you hook the fish, the bait itself will slide up the line and leave you with just a treble hook in their mouth. So you have a great landing ratio with that one. This one doesn't come in painted colors, just poured colors, but I'm telling you, color doesn't matter. I don't care if you're throwing bluegill or you're throwing crappie, as long as you're close, it's a profile thing. They do not like bluegill, they do not like sunfish around their beds. That brings us to this guy. This is the Little Creeper All-American Sunfish. You can get them in bluegill colors, crappie colors, bold colors, this little guy, we rig this on a Trocar 5 aught swim bait hook. So it's going to be a weedless rig, but it's a weedless rig with a huge hook in it. And the profile is so small. Here it is next to that U2. Almost the exact same profile. They can fully engulf the bait. Just gone. Even a 2, 3, 4 pounder can just fully engulf it. And it's so soft, it just crumples up in their mouth. These are all excellent, excellent sight fishing baits. You just crawl along bottom, let it bump. When you get close to that fish's bed, they are going to come out and smash it. Now we've already told you, you can catch them on jigs, worms, creature baits. There's a variety of different ways to catch these sight fish. The reason why I'm honing in on the bluegill swim bait, it's three parts. One, it's really fun to catch them on a swim bait. Two, these fish really don't like bluegill around their nests. So if you get a stubborn fish, you go to the bluegill swim bait and you can get them to be aggressive. We had somebody ask in the comments last week on Tim's finesse sight fishing video, if, if the finesse approach works so well, if they'll eat a Ned rig or a little worm so well, why would I ever go to the other end of the spectrum? Why would I even try a bigger bait? Why would I throw a jig? Why would I throw a swim bait? And the reason why is that those things work unbelievably well. But sometimes you'll come across a fish that just doesn't care. You could hop a worm through there all day long and you're looking at your new personal best. It's sitting right there eight feet away on the bottom. And you're working baits and it just sits there and it just doesn't care. But you bring a bluegill into the mix and they get serious about it. So it's another approach, another angle to get those bigger fish aggressive and get them to react. And all of a sudden you've got a new personal best. Now I do wanna add, when we're bed fishing, you want to take care of these fish. If you get one of these big females, catch them. If you need to take a picture, get a quick picture, immediately get them back in the water. You don't want to keep these fish out of the water and you don't want to take them away from the nest. These fish are the next generation. These big females are carrying all those eggs. If you want your lake to stay healthy, they need to go right back in the water. But I typically don't have a problem with catching them. Just be responsible about it. Now, next baits. These two little guys, these are storm bluegills. Totally different colors. This is a storm bluegill, this is a storm sunfish. One's super bold, one's really natural and plain. I can't see a difference in the way the fish react. Now they come with a belly treble on them. I take that off because again, we've gone, we've got our profile, 
but we're staying small so they fully engulf the bait. They have no problem getting that jig hook and that hook is plenty strong. These baits, whether you wanna go with that bright aggressive look or that natural look, are going to get bit. Uh, it pays to have both styles because again, with these bed fish, they're all different. Just like I said, one will eat a Ned Rig, the next one will eat a Jig, the next one won't look at anything but a Mat Lures. Uh, it pays to have that bright, bold color. You know, they're seeing that chartreuse down there digging in their bed, rooting around, versus that natural color. And these are both very inexpensive baits. This is the three inch size. It also comes in a little two inch size that's also a winner. But those are a great, great option on a budget. These guys, Bastrix, they're not even a swim bait, but I'm gonna include them in the category. Here's a really natural color, little smaller, bold color. But both of these little guys either fished on a jig head, or you can put it on a shaky head, or an exposed hook, or even on a drop shot. But those bluegill profiles, if you're drop shotting and they're not eating that worm, it doesn't hurt to quick take a bluegill profile. I mean, do I have one laying around? I have one laying right here on my step. It doesn't hurt to grab that little bluegill profile, throw it on that hook, and see if they'll suddenly flare up and react to that as well. And then last but not least, is just going to be a jig with a Kitek or some other swim bait on the back of it. This right here, there's a Kentucky Craw jig. This one's actually a finesse jig. Paired up with a little 4.3 Kitek, a 4.3 or a 4. Point, uh, I'm sorry, a 4.3 or a 3.8 on the back of a smaller jig gives you a great bluegill profile because the jig itself, especially if you finesse cut it like this, the face of that thing is pretty big. You know, it's giving you that bluegill type profile. It's not a slim little compact bait. And then if you use, you know, a male perch or this is green pumpkin fire, you're getting those bluegill type colors and it totally fits the niche. You can obviously, you can swim that jig, you can hop it on the bottom. And then when you're not sight fishing, it's just a finesse jig, just like any other one of your baits. Uh, but paired up with one of those bluegill type colored Kitex, will give you a great little profile. Guys, this is just a, a fun video. The bluegill swim bait is a really interesting way to get these big fish to react. It's different. Some of them, you're gonna pitch it in there and they're gonna completely ignore it. The next one, you're gonna pitch it in there and it is like the most violent scene you've ever seen unfold underwater. These giant bass just come unglued on that little bluegill. So it really pays to have one around ready to try. It's not my first bait because anytime you go with a bluegill swim bait, if you guys remember, a little bonus footage here at the end, I ran footage a couple months ago of one of my clients catching an 11 pounder on a big mat lures. And you'll notice on that one, I did actually add a stinger hook. And the reason why I had a stinger hook is that the bigger that swim bait gets, that bluegill swim bait, that awkward profile, the bigger the bait and the bigger the fish, they get that big strong head shake and they can throw that bait. So I don't start with the bluegill swim bait. I work up to it. I work up through the sizes. You know, I'm throwing one of these little guys, then I'm throwing one of these guys, and then I'm throwing a U2, and then I'm throwing a full size bait. Because I know that the bigger the bait that I hook them on, the less likely that I can keep that fish pinned long enough to actually land it. They're gonna come up with that big powerful head shake and they can fling that bait. So just know that if you hook them on the bigger bait, your job is to wrench on those fish just as hard as you can and get that fight over with. I mean, that fight that my client had lasted seconds. That's why he got that fish in the boat. If he hooked that fish on a regular jig rod instead of a swim bait rod, she would have come up thrashing. I'm telling you, we would have lost that fish. It happens. So. These baits are awesome at getting those bigger fish to react, but you really have to fight those fish hard. You've got to pull really hard on them, and it really pays to try to hook them on some of those smaller, lighter weight options before you hook them on one of the bigger options. Does that make sense for you? It's really a fun way to catch these fish, guys. If you've never done it and you enjoy sight fishing, 
pick up a bluegill swim bait. You'll be surprised how aggressive these fish get with them. It's a really good time. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate when you share these videos with your friends. We appreciate you guys. Have a good day. Thank you.